Welcome everybody. We do start on time and we end on time in this particular program. I'm Mary Hunt. I'm uh, from WATER, the Women's Alliance for Theology, Ethics, and Ritual, and I'm delighted to welcome you, especially those who might be new to our group. This is our third session of meditation in this season. We were very fortunate last month to have our friend Margaret Ellen Burke, who's with us tonight, share a poem from the 20th century Carmelite sister Jessica Powers. It was a springboard for our meditation, and I can tell you, Margaret Ellen, that it um, continues to resonate. I saw Margaret Ellen somewhere here. She might be on the other page, but she was here earlier. Um, and I'm just, I'm just delighted to um, say what that was. And to say to you that all of these programs can be found on our website at www.waterwomensalliance.org, and there you can actually replay them. So you can hear Margaret Ellen read the poem, and you can also um, enjoy the fruits of that meditation. So please feel free to use those programs. They're on our website. Look under Programs, Water Meditations, and they're there in uh, video and or audio format, depending on what we've done. So um, I'm, I want to thank you again, Margaret Ellen. It was, it was really lovely. We also share leadership in this group, so we can have a variety of inputs and styles. I'm pleased to say that, um, sorry for you, my dears, but the slots are all full for the rest of the season through July um, 2022, thanks to your generous offers. And a special thanks to those who have stepped forward, like Phoebe tonight. It looks like a very rich set of offerings, knowing some of the people who have presented before. And Anne-Marie will be presenting next month. And you can be sure that's going to be uh, a lovely experience. So I want to thank everybody for, for jumping up and uh, saying yes to the offer to present. And that's what makes it such a lovely experience, because all of us get, myself included, um, get to really enjoy the fruits of this meditation. So tonight we're going to focus on the cauldron of the Kaliak with our dear friend Phoebe Knopf. I want to thank Annalie Martin for returning to her uh, from her post-water internship year life to handle our technology tonight. Um, Annalie's been a, a valued part of this group for the last year when she was at water and um, we really we're glad to have you back Annalie. Just did you want to make a comment? <laughs> no? Just great, great to have you, and thanks for stepping up here at a time when we need you. Uh, we do record these sessions, as I mentioned, and I hope that you'll take advantage of them and share them with your friends. So the format, as usual, is that the presenter offers something that I would call short and sweet, and then it sparks our contemplation. We spend 22 minutes in contemplative silence together, and you may say, why 22 minutes? Just because. <laughs> no special reason. It seems to work. Listen for the gong, this is the gong, that will start and end the meditation sessions. Now there are many styles of meditation and you'll know best what gets you into a contemplative space. It may be focusing on your breathing, it may be a word or a phrase acting as a mantra, whatever works best for you. We do not dictate that. The key is that we're all doing it together. What Nancy Sylvester, who pioneered this approach, calls communal contemplation and dialogue. Communal contemplation. So the key is that we're here together. There's no right way to do this. There's no prescription that will get it right. There's simply what will help you to center yourself, to quiet yourself, and to join with this group of people who are doing the same thing. And I hope that you find it as rich an experience as I do every single month. Let me introduce Phoebe, and then she will have an opportunity to make remarks about the Kaliak, and then um, we'll move into our meditation. Phoebe Knopf is a multi-talented person. She's a poet. She's a musician. She's a spiritual soul who lives with deep intention, and she works for justice. She's one of what I think of as my water friends, someone I met through this work as she has long been a part of this circle. And every time she presents, I know I will learn and go deeper into myself because of Phoebe. At another water program on poetry, she wrote by way of self-introduction, and I quote, I like to write simply for the joy of writing and sharing informally. While an undergraduate at UMass Boston, I participated in a closet po poet's reading with other shy poets, both faculty and students. At least so far, I haven't sought publication, nor have I written a great deal of poetry, 
but I relish the process of writing when I can. The main focus of my life has been and continues to be working as a faith-based activist, including learning ways of healing for myself and others. Yet I hope to continue to write poetry whenever I can for the rest of my life." Unquote. And Phoebe, I can only say I hope you will. And I know what you share with us tonight at the Cauldron of the Kaliak will be its own kind of poetry. Thank you, my friend. Welcome. Thank you, dear Mary. Uh, yeah, thank you for egging me on to write poetry and for your beautiful welcome. It's wonderful to be with you all, my meditation friends. Um, I'm so happy to share my newfound deep appreciation for a marvelously creative goddess called the Kalyak. I hope you too will find joy in her wisdom. I've been searching in recent years for ways to become more deeply grounded in prayer in order to be ready to respond as faithfully as possible to some of the formidable justice challenges we face on our beautiful, increasingly imperiled planet. As a Celtic pagan friend of Jesus communities that risk working for justice, I've naturally searched through Celtic pagan and Christian activist resources to deepen my spiritual grounding. Water friend, feminist theologian and scholar Mary Condren, through her teaching at Water, has provided me with key inspiration for digging into my Celtic pre-Christian roots for feminist understanding and grounding. Among avenues of contemplation I've explored, I found none more satisfying than getting to know the Kaliach. This ancient goddess has been feared, suppressed, and belittled over thousands of years of overlaid patriarchal culture, but her underlying vivacity, tenderness, and vast power live on with formidable tenacity in the stories of ordinary people. The Kaliak is a pre-Celtic goddess figure still revered and popularly known as divine hag by goddess appreciators in Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. She is celebrated as a magnificent, prolifically inventive divine old woman who may have been in circulation six millennia ago with the people who settled in Ireland from Brittany in 4,200 BC. The Kayak, a name which means veiled one, is said to have shaped the land, creating mountains and lakes with her hammer. Diverse landforms, including the Hebrides Islands off the coast of Scotland, are said to have resulted from her dropping boulders from the pockets of her apron. As beloved goddess scholar, spiritual practitioner, and activist Patricia Monahan put it, the land was born when the Kayak dumped out the contents of her apron. The Kayak is said not only to have created the land, but she is believed to be intimately woven into it especially the wilderness whose creatures she protects. Another re highly respected Kayak scholar, Gerrit O'Croilach, speaks thus of the sacred hag's connection with the land. And I quote, the other land, the other world female is regarded in traditional cosmology as the personification of the divine female form in the physical landscape within which human life is lived, and also as the cosmic forces at work in that landscape. Myriad stories exist about the Kayak from throughout Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man, revealing complex, rich aspects of her nature and varying roles she said to play including creator of the land and weather, especially winter storms, healer, holy hag, unafraid to challenge sexist priests, and herder and protector of deer and other wild animals. As preparation for our silence, I'd like to share with you four paintings of the Kalyak, illuminating some of her different aspects. 
The first two paintings we'll see were brought to my attention, hearty thanks to water friend and goddess scholar Cynthia Tootle, who, when she heard of tonight's theme, sent them to Mary Hunt, who in turn graciously sent them to me. This painting called I Will Give You Ireland is by Irish American painter Barry McGuire. The kayak pictured here is the creator and sustainer of the land. She is also the weaver of a green mantle of compassion that protects us and compels us to care for each other and the earth wisely. Seated high above the sea, she sews her quilt, which looks uncannily like the green fields of Ireland. In her aged face are lines of great gentleness, love, and resolute truthfulness. This picture by storyteller Marin Taj Kaya is simply called the Kayak. This is she who sees clearly what must be eradicated in order to make room for new life in the spring and room for justice. The hag of winter is not afraid to act. Each time she strikes the earth with her ax, old growth dies, seeding the earth anew. She radiates kindness, commensurate with her strength, as she leans forward on her great stone axe, looking utterly peaceful amidst what appears to be a gathering storm. This next painting by Irish artist Jane Brideson is called The Deer Mother. The Deer Mother is guardian of the wilderness. She is a sacred friend to all that is wild, including our most radical dreams of justice. She is a divine healer of broken connections to our sibling creatures, the earth, the other world, and our ancestors. In her hands, she carefully holds a golden white speckled fawn. A line of very small deer, perhaps meant to exemplify deer spirits, runs toward her through the night sky. It appears they will pass through a fold of her cloak into her heart. This painting called Stone Antler Bone is also by Irish painter and poet Jane Brideson. On a cold winter night in 2017, Jane was sitting by her stove in her home in rural, uh, rural Ireland, thinking of the deer herds roaming the hills outside when an image of the kayak flashed into her imagination. Quickly, she went to work on this painting to record what she'd seen. Here, the kayak wears a necklace centering a hagstone an antler tine, and a bone. This seasoned guide is prepared to show us the way forward through darkness, including outrage from injustice, grief, danger, pain, difficult reckonings, state-imposed terror, cover-up, and confusion. This holy hag has been thinking outside the patriar patriarchal box for several thousand years. She holds her open hands out toward us, as if offering to be our guide. Shortly, I'll read a poem by Jane Brideson, also entitled Stone Antler Bone, with a few words temporarily added by me. You can read about that change in follow-up notes as well as find a link to the original poem. After you hear the poem, as we move into our shared silence, Annalie will put the four paintings back on the screen in case you might like to choose one of them or more to aid in your contemplation. On that same winter night in 2017, when Jane Brideson received the image of the kayak, she heard a low voice speaking the words of a poem which she quickly wrote down. Here it is. Stone, antler, bone. I come to you by stone, by antler and bone, by crow's feet of laughter, 
striations of tears, weathered contours of your body, a landscape of life. I come to you by stone, by antler and bone, by power of wildfire rising across your naked hills, howling lost love, keening, long labyrinth of night. I come to you by stone, by antler and bone, ancient rhythm of the women and heartbeat of the land. I come to you by stone, by antler and bone, to lead you through the blackness where wisdom takes new form. I'll guide you through dark's depth and return you to the light. And now we'll enter our silence. Thank you very much, Phoebe Knopf, for this inspiring presentation. I knew it would be poetry, and it was. And thank you to Cynthia Toodle for the images and the sources that grounded this work. Uh, it's really uh, just a rich collaboration, and it was very, very beautiful. Thank you. Have made, and um, I think we haven't all yet processed the richness of what you've given mm -hmm. us. And I hope that our sending out the notes from this and people having a chance to even re-watch the presentation, uh, maybe share with a friend, will unlock some more of the richness of what you've offered. So thank you so much, Phoebe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, was, it was poetry. It was poetry. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, I want everyone to feel uh, free to join us for these programs. They are free and open to everyone. At the same time, of course, your donations to water are needed and welcome. We try at water to socialize our resources so that those who can donate do so, so that we can always make our programs available to everyone without charge. We believe at water that if we share, only if we share among us, there's enough. And we said earlier tonight, um, Rosemary Meyer was on and we uh, thanked her. I thanked her uh, publicly, and I thank you again, Rosemary, for a, a generous donation from your community in honor of the late great Carolyn Farrell, who's one of the one of the water stalwarts, and also um, Donna Quinn, who died this year, who was a uh, Cincinnati Dominican. Carolyn was a BVM, but uh, Donna Quinn was a Cincinnati Dominican and very much engaged in women's issues unto being a clinic escort at an abortion clinic, which you can imagine made her beloved of the uh, local bishop. And uh, Donna Quinn has gone on and uh, we celebrate both of them. Mm -hmm. And the BVM Women's Network uh, generously donated in their memory to us. So that's how these kinds of programs take place. So I, I, again, to Rosemary and your crowd, thank you. And to all of you, thank you for being here. I wanna wish a happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate in the US next week as we celebrate our indigenous um, people as well as um, let's hope we can ignore the coming holiday season of commercialism and uh, mm -hmm. buying things and just have the time to be together with friends and family. So meanwhile, have a lovely rest of your day. Uh, it's morning for Coralie and I think probably evening for lots of the, what time is it there now? About nine o'clock? What time is it now, Coralie? It's, it's, it's now at 12.30 uh -huh. p.m. 
Oh my goodness. Afternoon. You better have your lunch, Carly. That's what happens with the daylight savings time and all that changes. Yeah. Great to have you with us. And please enjoy the rest of your evening, folks, and your day. If you want to hang around and chat, you're more than welcome to. Um, and I want to thank especially Phoebe Anneli for technical mm. help and may the Kayak find us at home. Anneli, but I, I um, and I say that I, I, I hope that this event spurs Mary Condren to write her, finish some of her work on Bridget that she's been working on and that she mm. comes back to us soon for um, another water program because Mary mm. Condren is one of the people I think of as uh, really living and um, expressing this tradition, this Kaliak tradition, uh, through Bridget and through other, uh, mm. and through the life of Mary Condren herself. And so I, I look forward to more from her and just to say yeah. what a good friend of water she is. And Phoebe, I'm so glad you're in touch with her. And that's really, that's really terrific. I know it means a lot to her. Oh, it means a lot to me. Um, yeah, I wish we could do something about the time zones. <laughs> Well, put the Kaliak on it, see what she's got, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, okay, Anne Marie, we look Thank forward you. to next month with you and Polly Murray. What a great what a great next step. Thank you. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving to all of you. And to all of you and have thank a you, lovely Margaret. evening. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Anneli, Phoebe, thank you. Thank you.